A well-regulated militia be necessary to the security of a free state. The right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Good Monday to you. Welcome to another edition of Bearing Arms, Cam and Company. My name is Cam Edwards, and I am so glad that you've joined us on the program today, talking about the uh, big decision handed down Friday afternoon uh, in uh, California. Judge Roger T. Benitez, U.S. District Judge, a uh, federal judge there, declaring that California's ban on so-called assault weapons violates the Second Amendment of the U.S. Constitution. Now, he did stay this decision for 30 days, giving the uh, state the opportunity to appeal, and it is, I would say, very, very likely, almost a given, uh, that the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals is going to keep that stay in place. So I don't expect the uh, uh, ban on so-called assault weapons to actually disappear uh, while this case is being litigated, although it could, there is that that slim possibility that the uh, Ninth Circuit could say, yeah, Judge Benitez is right. This is unconstitutional. Well, forget it. Californians deserve the ability to acquire the most popular rifle in America today, just like their counterparts in uh, you know most of the other states around the country. I just, given the Ninth Circuit, I don't think that that's going to happen. I think that that stay is going to remain in uh, place while this case is appealed and it could be a fairly lengthy appeals process before this case ultimately gets up to the Supreme Court. However, uh, it is worth noting, and we're going to dig deep into this decision today, because not only was this a great decision from Judge Benitez in terms of the outcome, in terms of striking down California's uh, ban on so-called assault events, but how the judge got there, I think is really important. You know, gun control activists, the anti-gun media, they're flipping out over the very first line in Judge Benita's opinion, in which he compares the utility of the AR-15 to a Swiss Army knife. Now, this is the main objection that I'm seeing from a lot of gun control advocates here. I can't believe you would call it. That's because they don't want to talk about the other 94 pages that Judge Benita's uh, opined on or opined in uh, about the constitutionality of a ban on modern sporting rifles. They want to focus on you know, whatever they can claim outrages in. The fact that this was uh, decision was released on Friday. It was Gun Violence Awareness Day. I can't believe the judge. It's a, it's a made-up holiday by gun control activists. If he had, if, if Judge Benitez had uh, issued that opinion today, the objection would have been, well, I can't believe he issued that opinion on Gun Violence Awareness Month. Right? Again, they are objecting to and they are flipping out over everything but the substance of Judge Benitez's decision because they don't have very good arguments against what Judge Benitez had to say. So let's delve into uh, Judge Benitez's decision. By the way, I'm gonna, uh, we're going to do things a little bit differently today. We're going to skip the uh, good deed of the day, the armed citizen story, the uh, recidivist report, because I have a feeling this is going to get uh, fairly beefy in terms of what we're talking about. But let's delve right into this. Uh, starting off uh, with this quote from Judge Benitez, this case is not about extraordinary weapons lying at the outer limits of Second Amendment protection. The ban, quote-unquote, assault weapons are not bazookas, howitzers, or machine guns. Those arms are dangerous and solely useful for military purposes. Instead, the firearms deemed, quote-unquote, assault weapons are fairly ordinary, popular, modern rifles. This is an average case about average guns used in average ways for average purposes. Now, that's important. Because gun control advocates, again, they, they base their claims for the constitutionality of a gun ban on the idea that these firearms are dangerous and unusual, right? Oh, they're, and they're disproportionately used in a lot of crime, and they're, they're military weapons of war. And Judge Benitez goes through in his 94-page opinion and refutes every one of those arguments from gun control activists. He points out, these guns are not unusual. He says modern rifles are popular. Modern rifles are legal to build, buy, and own under federal law and the laws of 45 states. There are probably more modern rifles in circulation than there are Ford F-150 pickup trucks. As we that says in 2018, 909,330 Ford F-150s were sold. Twice as many modern rifles were sold the same year. Imagine every time one passes a new Ford pickup truck, it's a reminder that two new modern rifles have been purchased. That's a lot of modern rifles owned by Americans. Other courts agree, he writes. Uh, Even accepting the most controversial estimates cited by the parties in the amici, the assault weapons at issue are in common use as that term was used in Heller. That is uh, New York State Rifle and Pistol Association versus Cuomo from 2015. 
Second Circuit Court of Appeals. We think it clear enough in the record that semi-automatic rifles are indeed in common use. That's the uh, Heller 2 case. So let's debunk the idea, Judge Benitez says, that these guns are uh, a bannable because they're not in common use, that not a lot of people own them. Uh, but he doesn't rest with the comparison to Ford F-150s. He actually cites the Supreme Court as well. He says the Supreme Court implied that as few as 200,000 stun guns owned nationwide by law-abiding citizens is a sufficient number to show common ownership and receive constitutional protection. And that he cites a case called Catano versus Massachusetts, where a woman had sued the state of Massachusetts over its ban on stun guns. The state of Massachusetts argued, well, these are items are protected by the Second Amendment. First of all, they weren't around in 1791. Secondly, they're not in common use. And the Supreme Court said, no, that's wrong. First of all, the Second Amendment does protect arms that were not around in 1791. It doesn't just protect blunder. What is the plural for blunderbuss? Blunderbussi? Blunderbusses? I don't know. Or muskets or things of that nature. No, it protects modern arms as well. And they did say that stun guns were in common use and were protected by the Second Amendment. As Judge Benitez goes on to say, a, uh, he says, going straight to the core, the California law criminalizes modern rifles kept or possessed everywhere, including in the home for self-defense. There are no current exceptions for ordinary citizens. A Californian who picks up an unregistered AR-15 style modern rifle solely to defend his family in his home commits a crime. It doesn't matter if the home was burglarized last night or is likely to be invaded this night. When it comes to self-defense in the home, the assault in Spain of California hits the bullseye, a direct burden on the core right. The Supreme Court said in Heller that the core right of the Second Amendment is self-defense inside the home. Again, it doesn't mean that there is no right of self-defense outside of the home, but that the core purpose of the Second Amendment is to protect you, and your loved ones inside your domicile. And Judge Benitez says, by banning these popular, commonly owned rifles for any purpose whatsoever, including home self-defense, the state of California is going too far. Now, the state of California had argued that, look, okay, so sure, we're banning these guns. And let's say they're popular. Well, well let, 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 let's say that they're commonly owned. Um, just, you know, look... <laughs> Just because we ban these guns doesn't mean that the average Californian who wants to uh, uh, have a firearm for self-defense doesn't mean that their options are all taken off the table. Why? They could have a handgun, at least one that is available under the California roster of handguns not deemed unsafe for sale. They could have a shotgun. They could have a featureless rifle. They just can't have these guns that we've deemed to be assault weapons. Well, Judge Benitez takes on that argument as well. He says, quote, the problem is that the alternatives remain argument has no limiting principle and would justify incremental firearm bans until there's only a single shot derringer remaining for lawful self-defense. The same argument that a handgun ban might be justified because government approved alternatives are available was rejected in Heller and it's rejected here. And then Judge Benitez quotes the Heller decision from 2008. It is, quote, no answer to say that it is permissible to ban the possession of handguns so long as the possession of other firearms, i.e. long guns, is allowed. So again, Judge Benitez, I think very um, swiftly and uh, bluntly uh, puts to rest the argument from the state of California that we can ban these guns because you can buy other guns. And again, Judge Benitez cites the Supreme Court in Heller as his argument as to why the claims by the state of California fall short. Then Judge Benitez takes on the argument that these types of firearms, modern sporting rifles, are so inherently dangerous that they must be banned. And why are they so inherently dangerous? Because they're uh, accurate and they can fire arms, they can fire rounds quickly. That's it. Right, their 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 rapid fire accuracy, as uh, Judge Benitez describes it, is a danger to be outlawed. And then he rebuts that argument too. He notes accuracy is very important for self defense because a civilian is accountable for every round he fires. If he misses the attacker, he'll hit something that he did not intend to hit, which may be an innocent bystander. And the state does not dispute the importance of accuracy alone for self defense. Judge Benitez then wonders: Does the state want rifles that are less accurate? 
No and yes, he says. The state wants rifles that are less accurate during rapid firing because rapid firing, it is claimed, correlates with criminal use. And there's no need for rapid firing for self-defense, according to the attorney general. In fact, he argues that the features prohibited by the assault weapons ban in California are characteristic of military weapons, and military weapons are designed to be accurate with rapid firing. Perhaps, says Judge Benitez, but that a civilian rifle has design features similar to a military rifle does not detract from its constitutional protection for self-defense. At the same time, it actually enhances a firearm's constitutional protection for militia readiness. The exception to this rule for civilian self-defense is a weapon's ability to fire in full automatic mode. The ability to fire fully automatic is, above everything else, what distinguishes an M16 from an AR-15-type semi-automatic civilian rifle. But the M16 was modified to allow for burst and single fire, or semi-automatic capabilities, because it was recognized that firing in full automatic is less accurate and wastes ammunition. And this is where the mantra that an AR-15 is, quote, almost as fast as the M16 fails. Because the M16 provides fast but inaccurate shooting in full automatic mode, when accuracy is needed, the M16 has the option of the slower, single-round, semi-automatic firing like an AR-15. Now, that's really important because we've had a number of federal courts say that, including, by the way, where I live, the Fourth Circuit Court of Appeals, they've argued that, uh, well, no, AR-15s can be banned because they're like machine guns, because they're like the M16. And Justice Scalia in the Heller decision wrote that, uh, you know, M16s and the like could be banned. And so AR-15s are like M16s, so therefore AR-15s can be banned. And Judge Benitez points out, well, no, <laughs> they're not like machine guns at all because they cannot fire fully automatic, right? Every time you pull the trigger, one round is released. There is no select fire option on an AR-15. So they might look like an M16. They might even shoot the same caliber of ammunition than the M16, but they are fundamentally different than M16s, which is why the military has M16s and they don't have AR-15s that they've issued to service members. Uh, he then goes on to uh, talk about one of the other arguments uh, from the state of California, which is that, again, these, these features that are banned are, are so inherently dangerous that a, uh, a rifle with some of these features like a, you know, a folding stock or an extendable stock uh, or a bayonet lug uh, are, 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 are somehow beyond the pale and remove these firearms from Second Amendment protections. Judge Benitez writes, in the end, the court finds that the primitive features do not change an AR-15 rifle from a benign weapon into a, quote, incredibly effective killing machine. He writes, another commonly espoused myth is that the caliber of these centerfire automatic weapons are more lethal. In fact, he says the evidence proves otherwise. The usual ammunition for an AR-15, the 223-556 round, is designed to cause wounding much more than death. Uh, he cites the uh, opinion of a, a doctor, Dr. Margulies, who testified that the 556 round was a NATO choice to inflict non-lethal wounds. He explained that using the 556 round designed for wounding rather than killing furthered a military goal of reducing the enemy fighting force by diverting healthy enemy soldiers to caring for its wounded soldiers. Hyperbole aside, Judge Benitez says, AR-15 ammunition is designed to make the AR-15 type rifle a wounding machine rather than a killing machine. So again, Judge Benitez puts to lie or puts to rest one of the lies uh, from the state of California uh, in terms of banning the AR-15s. So the next argument that he takes is uh, the argument that, well, the, these guns are uh, disproportionately used in a lot of crime. They are the, they are the weapon of choice for mass murderers, right? That, that's what gun control advocates claim. And Judge Benitez has an interesting argument. He does get into the claims that AR-15s and modern sporting rifles are the weapon of choice for mass murderers. And he disputes that. And we'll get to that in a minute. But his first argument is actually really interesting. He says, look, it doesn't even matter. I, and again, he says, I, I dispute the, uh, the idea that these guns are disproportionately used in uh, mass shootings or things of that nature. But even if they were, he said, even if these guns were the weapon of choice for mass murderers, that would not automatically uh, remove them from the uh, protections of the Second Amendment. He says if use by criminals could justify a weapons ban, it would amount to something like a disfavored heckler's veto. 
We might call it the criminal's veto. And then he explains the heckler's veto doctrine. If speech provokes wrongful acts on the part of hecklers, the government must deal with those wrongful acts directly. It may not avoid doing so by suppressing the speech. Just as a heckler's veto wrongly punishes persons who speak their ideas, California's ban punishes persons who choose modern rifles for home defense. In other words, if modern rifles are misused in crime, even disproportionately, government must deal with those wrongful acts directly. It may not deal with the problem by suppressing the rights of law-abiding citizens to have modern rifles for lawful uses. Thus, disproportionality is not a valid constitutional concern. Common ownership by law-abiding citizens for lawful purposes is the test. And then uh, Judge Benitez gets into the idea uh, that, uh, well, these guns are disproportionately used by, uh, by mass murderers, uh, noting, he says, uh, that there is little evidence that modern rifles are used disproportionately in crime. In fact, he uh, cites the Attorney General, uh, citing the 1994 Congressional House report uh, as evidence, and then he debunks that claim. He then moves on to the Attorney General's argument that, look, these guns aren't needed for self-defense. Because the, the average defensive gun use, according to the Attorney General of California, only involves 2.2 rounds being fired. So why do you need a, a rifle with a 30-round magazine when the average defensive gun use only results in 2.2 in shots being fired? And Judge Benitez gets into where that stat comes from, by the way. He says it uh, comes from the state's expert, Lucy Allen, who is an expert in uh, economics and statistics. And he says that Allen was hired specifically to conduct research for the state's litigation. Her study is not peer-reviewed. Her study can't be tested because she's not disclosed her data. Her study can't be replicated. In fact, she says that he says the uh, formula used to select 200 news stories for her study is incomprehensible. Worse, he says, the entire concept is suspect because it attempts to study an average defensive gun use based not on police reports, but on evidence or, or events rather reported in the news media and often lacking in detail, all while acknowledging that many events are never reported. So, in other words, this study that the attorney general is citing as evidence that uh, well, not a lot of rounds are fired uh, in a uh, average defensive gun use used 200 cherry picked news stories, right? Leaving aside all kinds of other defensive gun uses. And by the way, those 200 news stories that the state's expert included also included cases where the trigger was never fired, never pulled at all, and no shots were fired. Now, you and I know that the vast majority of defensive gun uses, that's the result, right? The presence of that firearm alone is enough to prevent that crime from taking place or, or, or going forward. That doesn't mean, however, that when the trigger is pulled in self-defense, that uh, you know the average gun owner only needs three rounds uh, in order to get to that 2.2 round average per defensive gun use. Allen again had to include a, a number of situations in which the trigger wasn't pulled at all. I would argue that if you really want to look at this fairly, you would separate those defensive gun uses in which the trigger wasn't pulled at all, and then you would look at those cases in which the trigger was pulled in self-defense and see if you can find out how many rounds were fired. But again, it's going to be very difficult to do that based only on a news story as opposed to police reports. But Judge Benitez notes that uh, she never bothered to look through or cite a single police report. Judge Benitez then turns uh, to the argument that, well, look, uh, when we had a federal assault ban. ban, uh, uh, crimes involving uh, these types of firearms decreased. And uh, Judge Benita says, eh, you know, they really weren't using a lot of crimes before the ban. Weren't using a lot of crimes during the ban. Weren't using a lot of crimes after the ban. And he notes that if the federal uh, quote-unquote assault ban um, had been in place from 2003 to 2007, he says uh, it's estimated that 38 people across the nation, may have been spared being shot with an assault weapon, although they may or may not have been shot with a non-assault weapon. But he said, think about some of the other crimes here that took place during that same time period. In contrast, he writes, during the same five years, 7,700 women may not have been raped 
and 266,560 homeowners may not have suffered a violent victimization during the burglary of their homes had they been armed with an assault weapon. Imagine calculating these figures, he says, over 30 years. He says, look, many victims don't choose to own a modern rifle. And though victimized once, some may still choose not to arm themselves against future home invaders. The Constitution doesn't force citizens to arm themselves for their own protection, but it does protect the liberty and freedom of those who choose to do so. And Judge Benitez then says today in a Sullivan's ban that trenches on the rights of 266,560 citizens to protect themselves from violent assault in their homes by criminalizing the acquisition and possession of a common firearm that they might deem best for their defense balanced against possibly reducing the shooting risk to 38 people is lopsided. So you want to have a balancing test? All right, well, let's let's look at the real balancing test here. You can say that lives were saved by the presence of this quote-unquote assault and span. But how many individuals were put at greater risk because they didn't have access to a so-called assault weapon that they could use in self-defense? And Judge Benitez then cites several additional news stories of moms, uh, innocent bystanders who used AR-15s to stop home invasions or other violent crimes, pointing out that, again, yeah, these guns are used in self-defense. He uh, revisits the, uh, uh, quote, weapons of war argument as well, uh, saying that some courts have coined the AR-15 a weapons of war and have said that because the AR-15 is most useful in military service, is not protected by the Second Amendment. It says some courts have reasoned that an M16 is most useful in military service, and this can be banned, and that the AR-15 is like the M16, so it can also be banned. But Judge Benitez says, you know, the Miller case, the case from the 1930s that gun control activists love to cite as, the, as evidence that the Supreme Court uh, didn't view the Second Amendment as an individual right. First of all, that's not what Miller held. Uh, Miller didn't address the issue whether or not the Second Amendment was an individual right or not. It, it, it addressed the issue of whether or not a sawed-off shotgun was protected by the Second Amendment. And the Supreme Court said no, because the arms that are protected by the Second Amendment have to have some sort of utility uh, for service in the militia. And Judge Benitez reminds readers of that fact. He says it, Miller held that it's precisely this type of firearm a firearm that has a reasonable relationship to militia service that is protected by the Second Amendment. And he says it's a principle that Heller grasped, uh, saying that the holding of Miller is uh, not only consistent with, but positively suggests that the Second Amendment confers an individual right to keep and bear arms, though only arms that have, quote, some reasonable relationship to the preservation or efficiency of a well-regulated militia. Uh, Judge Benitez then goes on to uh, cite a number of other uh, court cases, uh, all of which talk about, again, the relationship that uh, an arm has uh, to service in a militia as to whether or not it is protected by the Second Amendment. And finally, uh, in his conclusion, Judge Benitez says, in the end, the Bill of Rights is not a list of suggestions or guidelines for social balancing. The Bill of Rights prevents the tyranny of the majority from taking away the rights of a minority. When a state nibbles on constitutional rights, who protects the minorities? The federal courts. The Second Amendment protects any law-abiding citizen's right to choose to be armed to defend himself, his family, and his home. At the same time, the Second Amendment protects a citizen's right to keep and bear arms to use should the militia be needed to fight against invaders, terrorists, and tyrants. The Second Amendment is about America's freedom, the freedom to protect oneself, family, home, and homeland. California's assault weapons ban disrespects that freedom. So again, I think this is a uh, it's a great decision. It is well reasoned. It is uh, very well argued, which is one reason why the gun control activists are pointing to the very first line in this ninety four page opinion. Oh, I can't believe you compare it to a to a to a Swiss Army knife. Look, whether you like the comparison or not, uh, Judge uh, Benitez was simply talking about the utility of the AR-15, right? Used for a variety of lawful purposes. Self-defense, hunting, recreation, competition. And again, the vast, vast majority of owners of AR-15s and other modern sporting rifles are law-abiding citizens. These are arms that are in common use for a variety of lawful purposes. And therefore, he says, they are protected by the Second Amendment. I, I got to say... Um, 
I wasn't surprised to see Judge Benitez issue this decision. He is known in uh, California gun circles as St. Benitez for uh, overturning the state's ban on uh, large capacity magazines, also for uh, rejecting a California law that requires background checks on ammunition sales and forbids California residents from purchasing ammunition online or from out of state. So this is not the first pro-Second Amendment decision that Judge Benitez has issued. I'm also not really surprised to see the reaction from gun control activists because they know that um, that the writing is on the wall, quite frankly, uh, for bans on modern sporting rifles. And while a number of appellate courts around the country have tried to write the Second Amendment uh, out of the Bill of Rights and have even declared that, you know, even if these are protected arms, uh, the state's desire uh, to uh, to to increase public safety, justify such a ban. But Judge Benitez has argued that point too. He said, "Look, yeah, you know, yeah, you 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 governments have the um, the authority to act in the public safety, but this experiment has been a failure. California's ban has been in place since 1989, and he pointed out the number of mass shootings in which an as a so-called assault weapon was used in California is." Exactly the same now as it was before the ban was put in place in the 80s. So this experiment, in the name of public safety, hasn't actually made the public any safer. But it has deprived, what, uh, almost 40 million Americans uh, of their ability to fully exercise their right to keep and bear arms. So... Again, it's a great decision. Now, look, it is going to be a while before this case gets up to the Supreme Court. So here's what happens next. State of California has 30 days to appeal this decision. They will do so. We already know that. Uh, Then the Ninth Circuit will uh, start the clock. We'll have another round of briefings, eventually oral arguments, and then uh, a three-judge panel in the Ninth Circuit will issue its opinion. And that could be well over a year from now before the Ninth Circuit issues its decision. If a three-judge panel on the Ninth Circuit says, you know what, Judge Benitez was right. California's uh, Sullivan's ban is unconstitutional. Well, the state of California can appeal that on bonk to a larger panel of judges on the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals. And that starts the process rolling all over again. Another round of briefings, another round of oral arguments, another uh, uh, fairly lengthy delay before an on bonk panel of the Ninth Circuit comes back with this decision. We could be looking at three years or more. Uh, before this case gets up to the Supreme Court. Now, if the Ninth Circuit comes back and this three-judge panel that will hear the case next, if they come back and they say, you know what, Judge Benitez was wrong. This actually is, uh, it's, it's not, these items are not protected by the Second Amendment. It is okay to ban the most popular rifle in America today. Nobody's constitutional rights are violated by doing that. Well, that should, that'll actually speed up the process a little bit uh, because then we can avoid that en banc review by the Ninth Circuit and the uh, plaintiffs in this case can appeal this straight from the Ninth Circuit to the Supreme Court. That could shave a year or more off of SCOTUS getting this case. Uh, in the meantime, though, think about what's coming down the road, let's say over the next year or so. In the fall, the Supreme Court is going to consider oral arguments, or will hear oral arguments, in New York State Rifle and Pistol Association versus Corlett. That is a challenge to New York City's, or to New York State's, rather, restrictive May issue. Uh, carry permitting system where you have to show good cause and the average resident can't can't get a license to carry for self-defense. Now, that case doesn't deal specifically with quote-unquote assaultants, but it does deal and it does provide the court the opportunity to weigh in on the standard of review in how the Second Amendment challenges are being decided by lower courts. Uh, in this particular case, in the California Assaultants Ban case, Judge Benitez says, look, under any level of scrutiny, this ban fails. You can, you can use intermediate scrutiny, which is this sort of you know vague, fuzzy, middle legal ground that a lot of courts have used to uphold all kinds of gun control laws. Judge Media says, now, nah, even under intermediate scrutiny, California's assaultment ban fails. But the court also has the opportunity in New York State Rifle and Pistol Association for, uh, versus Corlett to set the record straight and to say, look, we're talking about a fundamentally important right here. So you've got to treat it as such. You can't, you can't keep treating the Second Amendment as a second-class right. Um, and the court's determination 
an ultimate ruling in uh, New York State Rifle and Pistol Association versus Corlett could have an impact on the Ninth Circuit as they consider this challenge to the state's so-called assault weapons ban. Uh, we also have the opportunity for the court to weigh in on a magazine ban. There's a case out of New Jersey that the uh, court will consider in conference this fall. Uh, it's already been filed there at the Supreme Court. It should be one of the first cases that the court takes up in conference uh, and when it reconvenes in the fall. Don't think they're going to have time to uh, to deal with it this session. I think they'll likely wait a few months. But it is possible that by the time the California Assaultments Ban Challenge gets to the Supreme Court, the Supreme Court has issued good opinions dealing with the right to carry uh, and bans on so-called large-capacity magazines. Uh, and in those cases, those are vehicles where the court can make it clear to you know the lower courts out there that this type of abuse of the Heller decision, the, the, the misreading, the intentional misreading of the Heller decision to uphold all kinds of gun control laws, that those days are, are gone and done and over with. And I think that uh, Judge Benitez has written this decision uh, with that ultimately in mind. Again, laying out the exhaustive rebuttals to every one of the state's argument, but also pointing out uh, the errors that some other courts have had when it comes to considering the constitutionality of a ban on the most popular centerfire rifle in the country today. So I, I know it seems like we've gone through a lot of this uh, uh, opinion by Judge Benitez, and we have, but we haven't gone through all 94 pages. So I would encourage you, if you're a uh, Second Amendment legal geek, you, you really like this stuff, there's a lot of other good information. There's some great armed citizen stories uh, that we didn't get to in Judge Benitez's opinion. But uh, if you have an hour or so, uh, we'll provide the link uh, in, in the uh, text below and uh, at bearingarms.com. But do yourself a favor and read this entire opinion. If nothing else, there are some fantastic rebuttals and arguments the next time some anti-gun nut pops up in your social media feed screeching and hollering about your support for uh, a, a, you know, modern sporting rifles and well, are you going to ban these weapons of war? You, there's, some, there's some, again, really good rebuttal material there uh, in uh, Judge Roger Benitez's opinion, declaring California's assault and span to be unconstitutional. All right, when we come back uh, with the next edition of Bearing Arms Cam and Company, we will get back to our normal flow here. We'll, we'll have an armed citizen story. We'll have a good deed of the day for you. We'll have a recidivist report. But like I said, I really wanted to just, you know, dig deep uh, into this decision by Judge Benitez and uh, talk about what I thought were some of the real highlights of this uh, extraordinarily helpful opinion there out on uh, California's left coast. All right. Until we talk again, don't forget, you can always subscribe to uh, BarionArms.com. Become a VIP member. All you got to do is go to BarionArms.com slash subscribe. Use the promo code GUNS and you'll get 25% off of your VIP membership. That allows us to continue to do programs like this each and every day, bringing you the latest Second Amendment news and information. But we also give you exclusive analysis, commentary, and more. And you can find us online. Just look for Town Hall Media on YouTube or Bearing Arms Cam and Company at uh, Rumble.com. Spotify, SoundCloud, Stitcher, Apple Podcasts, Amazon Podcasts as well. We will be back tomorrow with more of the latest Second Amendment news and information. But until then, be well, be safe, and be free.